Bible is entitled The Prophecy of Anna. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher. And she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. My God, my God. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking to Mary and Joseph, and she began to praise God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. 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 For a few moments, on today, I want to encourage you from the subject. She endured, she expected, and she exhorted. She endured, she expected, and she exhorted. And for a thing, I simply want to give you living in his presence. Amen. Amen. A testimony of the prophetess Anna. Even though we are believers in the true and living God that are doing the very best we can to be the best we can. There are always times when the issues that we face become irritating. They become bothersome and hard to tolerate. Have you ever been there? Amen. There are times, Sister Lisa, that we give our all to the ministry that God has blessed us with. All right. And as we engage ministry, we deal with meeting the needs of the people. Mentally, physically, and spiritually. But after we do that, Minister Rickards, we often find ourselves with the short end of the stick. That is true. When we need to be ministered to ourselves. Amen. There are moments when we long for the power of God, the guidance of God, and the success that brings God glory. We long for that. Amen. But along the way, there is turbulence in the process. And we understand that this process ultimately leads us to our God-assigned purpose. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes when we experience turbulence and when we experience trouble, we begin to doubt our effectiveness yeah. and our significance in God's providential plan. My God. My brothers and my sisters, we all go through good times when we can celebrate the faithfulness and the goodness of God. However, on the other end of that spectrum, 
There are unanticipated stumbling blocks. There are tough times that test our patience but cause us to grow. Then there, there, then there are tumultuous times. And in those times, we must remember, no matter what, that God has placed himself in every situation that he faced. Yes, yes, yes. Let me encourage you that no matter what you are going through, God is all-powerful. Amen. 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 God is still good. And God is forever faithful. And we must always remember that no matter what it looks like, God is with us. Amen. Even in the midst of this troublesome world, as we endure the good, as we endure the bad, and as we endure uncertainty, we must live with the expectation and the anticipation that in the midst of it all, and I want you to hear me closely, Jesus is still on the boat in the midst of the storm. Yeah. So when the wind of life begin to increase, my brothers and my sisters, we have no need to fear. When the waves of destruction try to rock our boat, Amen. we have no need to fear. When the life that we live has become a little bit unstable with God in the boat, we have no need to fear. When unexpected dysfunction tries to distract us, we have no need to fear. Just keep your faith and never cease to pray. Just walk upright, call a noon, day or night, because he'll be there. He'll be there. There's no need, HMBC, for you to worry because God, he never fails. When we realize that we have to endure life with great expectations. Do we realize that we must endure the struggle with great expectation? We endure the grief with great expectations. We endure tragedy with great expectations because guess what? God is still on the boat. Because of this, we praise his holy name. Like we were just singing, he is our worship. In the midst of all that we endure, we are not to throw our hands up and surrender. But as believers, in the true and living God, when we throw up our hands, we throw them up in praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because God has revealed to us what is good. And what we do when he revealed to us what is good is we simply do justly. Love mercy. And we walk humbly with our God. And because we are striving to do justly, to love mercy, and walk humbly with our God in the midst of the struggle, in the midst of the heartache, in the midst of dysfunction. People should witness us embracing the gospel, loving the gospel, and living the gospel, and not only doing all of that, but sharing the gospel. Yes, yes, talk about it. The physician Luke, as we know, is the author of this gospel. And the purpose of this gospel 
is to give understanding to everyone that this Jesus who came to redeem the lost is for all people. Yeah. Everybody should have shouted up in here. Yeah. Because it's Jesus that came to save, came to save all of us. Isn't it good to know that God cared enough about us to send his only son. Yes. And because of that, we know that Jesus is for us. See, friends may walk away from you, but you can declare on today that Jesus is for me. Yes. Contrary folks may try to disrupt your day, but you can encourage yourself by saying, Jesus, Jesus. is for me. The burdens may sometimes get hard to bear, but guess what? Jesus is for me. Amen. Sometimes we get tired, and we get tired in the midst of the process as we try to progress. But we can be energized because Jesus is for me. Tragedies, they will come in 2023. Amen. But there's great comfort in knowing that no matter what transpires in your life, Jesus is for me. Amen. And in the midst of it all, because Jesus is for me, I will live for him. Amen. Luke, as we know, addresses the gospel to the most excellent Theophilus. Yes, yes. However, we do also understand that there's a broader audience. Mm -hmm. mm. It was made up of faith field, uh -huh. redeemed, and equipped Gentile Christians. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. These Gentile Christians had been educated about Jesus the Christ. And Luke's purpose in both, the, in both the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles was to make certain that the Gentile Christians know and understand that what had been imparted uh -huh. into them uh -huh. was accurate, yes. uh -huh. it was factual, yes. and it was genuine. Yes, sir. And it was truly God's plan that the Gentiles also be delivered and brought into the fold. Amen. Amen. In the text, we have the prophetess Anna. Amen. Amen. Here we have a woman in the ministry. Yeah. Amen. And we understand by the text. She was an elderly woman. Amen. Amen. She was an elderly woman that God used. Amen. Yeah. This woman had lived with her husband for seven years before he passed away. And she had been a widow for roughly 84 years. Are y'all with me? Yeah. We understand that in the midst of what had gone on in her life and what was going on in her life, she did not allow what she had been through or what she was going through All right. to cause her to depart from God. Amen. My Lord. Amen. In today's terms, we're saying she didn't look like what she'd been through. Mm -hmm. However, in the midst of losing her husband, and in the midst of a long life, she served God diligently. Amen. The Bible says she served God diligently day and night with fasting and prayer. Yes. yes. Am I in the book? Yes. Amen. She came along, my brothers and my sisters, just 
as Simeon was talking to Mary and Joseph. And when she saw Jesus, she began to praise God for what he had done. Let me ask you a question. When you see Jesus, do you praise him for what he does? Do you praise him for showing up on the scene? Do you praise him for showing up in your circumstances? Amen. Amen. But not only Deacon Woods did she praise God, she began to preach. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> she began to preach. <laughs> she began to tell other folks All right. in need about Jesus. All right. When Jesus shows up, do we praise him? And do we leave the experience ready to tell other folks All right, about him? See, what we find with the prophetess Anna is consistent faithfulness. And if we can glean anything from this text on today, we must continually be faithful. This lets us know as we observe the text, it tells us she did her best to stay in God's presence day and night offering worship to him. How many of us have that testimony on today that no matter what we do, we never leave the temple. But we stay there night and day worshiping God. Yeah. See, there are gonna be times right when we're misrepresented, yeah. but we have to never leave the temple, but stay there yeah. night, and day, night and day worshiping God. Yeah. We've been sick sometimes. Wondering if we're ever going to get well. But guess what? We should never leave the temple. Hallelujah. And we must stay there night and day. Night and day. Worship with God. Hallelujah. Even if you're at Southside Hospital, you never leave the temple. You stay in the temple day and night. Worshiping God. If you've been abandoned or you've been broken, you never leave the temple. But you stay there night and day. Worshiping God. Friends may forsake you, but you never leave the temple. And you stay there night and day. Worshiping God. Sometimes we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. But guess what? You never leave the temple. But you stay there night and day. Worshiping God. Do I got five folks? Who are never going to leave the temple who are never going to remove themselves from the presence of Almighty God. As we look more at the text, we see terms that she did not depart and she continually served. Amen. Even when she lost her husband, she did not depart. But she continued to serve. Amen. I'm sure everybody didn't agree with one another in the temple. Mm -hmm. But she did not depart. And she continued to serve. I'm sure some sickness came through the land. Amen. But she didn't stay home. Amen. My God. She did not depart. And she continued to serve. However, when Jesus shows up on the scene, yes, yes, yes. she gave thanks to the Lord yes. in the midst of her old age. She gave thanks to the Lord yes. in the midst 
of living on the temple grounds for 84 years. She gave thanks. Are we willing to give God thanks in the midst of our hard times? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we willing to give God thanks even after waiting on Jesus for 84 years? This lets us know that in the midst of it all, we need to do our best to stay in the presence of God. And as we stay in the presence of God, we must be willing to serve him day and night. That means sometimes you're going to be called to serve in uncomfortable circumstances. Amen. Amen. You're going to be called to serve in the midnight hour when you're ready to get your beauty sleep. All right. You're going to be called to serve sometimes when you don't have the money to serve, but you got to serve. Yeah. Amen. We must be willing to serve. God day and night and when Jesus moves and when he manifests his presence in our lives and in our situations see sometimes just a sharing we slow down when Jesus begins to move we slow down when we get sick. We slow down as father time creeps in. Mm -hmm. But it's our mandate not to slow down. Amen. Not to relax. But it is time for us to give God thanks and seek to continue to live the story while we tell other folks about Jesus. Amen. So, she endured the struggle without falling apart or falling away. She was productive in the midst of waiting on God. She praised and she preached to those who were waiting on Jesus. So how should we live? while enduring life and all that comes with it while we wait <laughs> expectantly on Jesus. Number one, the expectancy of Jesus calls us to endure the struggles of life without falling apart or falling away. That means our focus cannot be on the people. Amen. Amen. It must be on God. Because it makes no sense. Throw this in parenthetically. That you get mad with somebody mm -hmm. and walk away from God. Amen. So our expectancy of Jesus causes us to endure the heartaches and the pain without falling apart and without falling away. Yeah. Number two, the anticipation of Jesus because of our faith causes us to be productive in the church and outside of the church even in the midst of uncomfortable circumstances that life puts us in. So our mandate as we wait for Jesus is to be productive on purpose in excellence. Number three, the arrival of Jesus causes us to engage in continuous and spontaneous praise with the burning desire to love the gospel, to preach the gospel, and to live the gospel in the presence 
of those waiting on him. Isaiah simply says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I simply want to encourage you all today to wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he, I said he, yeah. will strengthen thine heart. Yeah. Wait, yeah. I say, yeah. on the Lord. Yeah. Don't allow yeah. the struggle to hinder you. Yeah. Wait on Jesus. Yeah. Don't let loneliness yeah. overtake you. Yeah. Wait on Jesus. Yeah. Don't allow your flesh to guide your life. Wait on Jesus. Don't let failing help steal your joy. Wait on Jesus. Don't allow covetous people to destroy your peace. Wait on Jesus. Don't allow detours to keep you from your destiny. Wait on Jesus. They don't make moves based off your feelings. Wait on Jesus. Don't hurt other folk because you've been hurt. Wait on Jesus. See the songwriter says, Lord, I want you here with me in my heart. Let thy spirit be. Send your saving power. I pray. Jesus, keep me all the way. When I'm trying to walk right, Lord, keep me as I strive for righteousness. Lord, keep me as I serve for your glory. Lord, keep me when I'm hurt, impoverished, and broken. Sometimes I get weary. Lord, reinforce me through relationships. Lord, surround me when I get down. Lord, encourage me when I'm disconnected. Lord, be me when I grow old. Energize me as I abide in the temple. Lord, enlighten me as I fast and I pray. Lord, Grow me, Jesus, be a fence all around every day. Jesus, I want you to protect me as I travel along the way. I know you can. I know you will. Fight my battle. Just keep still. When I arrive, I know he can and he will be a fence as I seek to go higher. I know he can and he will be a fence as I endure the times. I know he can and he will be a fence as I face. I know he can and he will be a fit as I serve for his glory. I know he can and he will be a fit as I preach the gospel message as I teach the gospel message as I live the gospel message. He's a fit. He's a help. He's to knowledge, he's hope, yeah. tomorrow, he's peace, yeah. and greater peace, he's joy, unspeakable joy, he's love, he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life, he's the calm, in the midst of chaos, he's a healer, a redeemer, the will, in the middle of the will, he's Jacob's ladder, Mary's baby, the shoulder that I lean on, 
she expected. And she exhorted. Simply, church, live life in God's presence. Yes. Yes. Study the gospel. Yes. Love the gospel. Yes. Live the gospel. Yes. God bless you, the door to the church of Rome. Yes.